What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In today's video, I'm going to kind of talk about winterizing your workshop, which is going to include shop heating, uh, insulation, all that kind of stuff. So when I'm thinking of heating a shop, it's really not as much about comfort as it is for things like finishing and glue ups. Uh, obviously finishing in particular, uh, if you're using something like an oil based finish that already takes, let's say eight to even 24 hours to dry between coats, uh, if you're finishing below 50 50 degrees, you're going to extend that dry time quite a bit. So I want to go over some of the heating options you have in the shop. There are a number of types available. First, you've got propane and gas, which is pretty common, but you're going to need to have some sort of ventilation probably. And also, obviously, you're going to have, need to have access to gas, which I do not have here. Uh, next is going to be a wood stove. These are kind of super traditional. And as woodworkers, obviously, we already generate a lot of scrap wood. So you've got some fuel kind of built in from your shop, um, but these do have a certain amount of danger and risk associated with them. Uh, the next option is going to be electric, which is what I ended up going with. Uh, a lot of us already have 240 volt service in our shop. So that's not going to be a huge deal. And a lot of these heaters will run off of a typical 20 or 30 amp circuit. You've also got infrared heating, which are the large kind of overhead heating tubes you see at a lot of restaurants and things like that. I have a pretty low ceiling height in my shop, so that wasn't really an option for me. I was afraid I'd be banging into it all the time. So, uh, but that does seem like a pretty good option that also runs off of electricity. Uh, you've also got mini split units, uh, which are very expensive. That's the main reason I haven't gotten one of those yet. I hope to add one of those this summer uh, for some air conditioning, but you're looking at usually at least a thousand dollars for the mini split unit itself, plus another probably almost a thousand dollars for installation. So that's a pretty expensive option. And last, probably the most expensive option is in floor heating. Uh, it seems amazing, but is also very, very expensive to install. Um, either you got to do it before the floor is actually poured, if it's a concrete floor, or you have to add an additional kind of subfloor, and that gets really, really pricey. So um, the Wood Whisperer, uh, Mark Spagnolo did a great video on this. If you guys haven't already seen it, I'll put a link in the description to his video below. He really summed things up nicely. So definitely go check out his video. As I said, I went with an electric solution. Um, just to tell you a little bit more about my shop situation, it is a two door, two car garage. It's about 25 feet deep, 40 feet wide. So the main garage is about a thousand square feet. And then I've also got this kind of odd attached hallway that's 25 feet long and seven feet wide. So all told, I've got about 1200 feet of open space here to heat. Usually, if it's let's say 15 or 20 degrees outside it will still be in the 40s here in the shop so it does stay pretty warm just right off the bat the garage is attached to my house so it gets some of the benefits from that and also part of the garage is below ground um, so obviously it gets some insulative benefits from that as well so really I just wanted a heater and a heating solution that could bring the shop temp up into the high 50s or low 60s range just to kind of keep the finished drying process Process moving along uh, so it wouldn't be so slow. So uh, I did some research. I actually saw some recommendations on Twitter for this heater. That's how I landed on it. Um, this is the Cadet the hot one as they call it. So they've got two different models in this. They've got a 5,000 watt version that runs on a 30 amp circuit. That's what I went with. And then they've got a 4,000 watt version that runs on a 20 amp circuit. They're both 240 volts. So you will need 240 volt service. The 5,000 watt they recommend for about 500 square feet. So realistically, I probably should have gone with two of these and I might end up adding another one. That said, this heater has been able to heat up my shop really effectively. So usually what I'll do is come out 30, 45 minutes before before I'm gonna start working, especially if I'm gonna be finishing. And I can usually get the temperature up from, you know, the 40s uh, up into the high 50s, low 60s within an hour or so. Uh, that, that's pretty impressive. So it's got a heating element inside and then also a fan that helps to kind of distribute the heat. I think that's really one of the big factors and why it works so well. It kind of helps circulate the heat around. Um, it's got a high and low power mode. Um, so if you don't need for it to be cranking out 5,000 or 4,000, watts, you can switch into the lower power mode. It does have an adjustable temperature dial. Um, you can also set it to an automatic mode. So basically once it gets to that temperature, it'll cycle off and that way it won't be just running constantly. In this shop though, realistically, I have it on high 
uh, for at least a couple hours before I feel like I want to lower it down and before I feel like I'm really warm enough to be working out of here just because it is so big uh, and again I probably should be using two of these so cadet was nice enough to sponsor this video so they did provide me with this heater to kind of check out I'm really loving it so far there was no agreement to me having to give positive feedback or anything like this so this is my honest opinion some of the things that I really liked about this heater were one it's American made I really value American made products and try to support American made companies anytime I can uh, the price point I think is very good uh, it's about $250 or so for the 4,000 watt model and around $330 for the 5,000 watt model so very competitive um, the other thing I liked about it is it's nice and compact you can see this is not a huge unit it's also very quiet a couple of the tips that cadet recommends is to install it on the wall rather than on the floor uh, that's just going to keep it out of contact with a lot more of the dust that's just going to accumulate on the floor uh, you're also going to want to install it so it's not super close to anything else you know at least a couple feet on either side um, just because it does get a little bit hot you're going to want to clean it a little more regularly than the manual recommends just because again a wood shop is a super dusty environment as you can see there is some dust built up on this um, basically what i'll do is just blast it with compressed air and blow some of that dust out usually about once a week and it can be purchased through most of the big box stores. I know Home Depot carries it. Also, Amazon has it. I think your local hardware stores can also special order these if you'd rather go that route. So I've been using this heater for about a month. I wanted to wait and see how it affected my power bill before doing a video on it. And so I got my power bill recently. It is up about 80 to $100 over the previous month, but it's hard to really say how much of that was this heater versus the heat inside our home. I also have a Nest thermostat inside, so I can see that we used about twice as much heat this month over last month. I would be willing to bet that maybe 50 to $75 of that bill came from this heater. I ran it about seven hours a day, five days a week uh, for the past month. I wasn't really thinking about how much cost that was going to add. So uh, I've been very comfortable in the shop and uh, it's run really nicely and kept the shop nice and warm. And really, even if it was 50 or 75 bucks, I think that is well worth it. Um, this is a business expense to me. Obviously, I think most of you guys are probably not going to be running this five days a week and for that long so if you're just going to be running this for finishing and glue ups and that type of thing i really don't think it's going to add a whole lot to your electric bill thanks again to cadet for sponsoring this video i'm really happy with the way this unit is performing so far and i will kind of keep you guys up to date as time goes on so with heaters kind of covered uh, let's talk a little bit about insulation so you've got a number of options obviously depending on your shop space for my space it's kind of a combination it's a garage and basement shop so um, I've got a few insulation options I'm considering haven't done any of them yet I'm really not sure how much it's going to add seeing as the shop space already stays fairly warm I think one thing I'm definitely going to do is the garage door insulation as I said I have two garage doors uh, I was researching online it seems like this matador brand is one of the more popular I've heard some of the other YouTube woodworkers recommend that brand it's about 75 bucks per garage door so it's really not very expensive and if any of you guys have experience with that product, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments below. I'll have links to that uh, so you can check it out if you're interested. Another product I've been thinking about is this InsoFast basement insulation. They're basically these foam panels that just drop into place against your kind of cinder block walls like I have here or your poured concrete walls if you have those in your basement and it's got electrical uh, channels for running wires through and seems to just kind of be a plug and play solution uh, without having to do any sort of framing or anything like that uh, again if you guys have any experience with that I'd love to hear about it this is my first winter working in the shop full time so uh, I'm still pretty new to all this stuff but I've done a little bit of research and tried to wrap my head around it to kind of present you guys with some of your options so I think that's going to do it for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, this is my second channel this is where i do all the tool reviews and installations and unboxing and all that kind of stuff so uh, if you're interested in that go ahead and get subscribed here i also have all my main project videos on my main channel uh, get subscribed there as well and if you want to support me check out the amazon affiliate links in the video description uh, those don't cost you anything and really kind of help to support future videos like this so thanks again for watching everybody and until next time happy building